be comfortable and be willing to be great and be okay with the people that might be uncomfortable because of it, right? Don't be so... Don't be so set on placating other people's insecurities that you minimize your opportunities, your own greatness, Mm. right? Because the people that you're minimizing your greatness for, right, are still not going to like you. Yo, what's going on, millionaires? Thanks for tuning in to the Million Dollar Mind podcast, episode 197 on building a strong and loyal community. Now, I'm really excited about this conversation because community is a word that we talk about a lot in the podcast and in the community, right? We have a community of our own. You know, we had a lot of people come on here who are building out communities. And I got my brother from another, literally, Joseph Hines in the building, uh, brother of Alpha Phi Alpha hey, Fraternity Incorporated. So literally, my frat brother yeah. and it's always good just connecting with you know bros and you know yeah. people on a on a thing and, and and doing some real things in business and you know for you guys who have not seen this sharp brother right this yeah. this this <laughs> seemed like this seemed like a, a light day for you bro this yeah, like yeah, this yeah, is yeah, like yeah, nothing yeah. that is atypical this is the right. typical this is the standard right yeah yeah this, so this is a regular day yeah tell our listeners a, a little bit more about you uh and you know where they can where they can find you okay, and cool. you know a little bit about where you where you got started in business yeah absolutely man man. So again, you know, my name is Joseph Hines. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Mr. J Hines. And I've been in the menswear industry for about a decade now. Mm-hmm. And um, over the past year and a half, two years, I, I've kind of also added another layer to the business with my business partner um, and created a community called The Standard, mm-hmm. uh, which is essentially a private community of high performing men where we give them access to private experiences, high level masterminds um, and a concept we've created called Digital Cities, where we encourage and connect uh, guys together and encourage guys to spend money within the community so the money circulates inside rather than outside mm-hmm. and man it's it's been a blessing you know in in the past couple months i mean we have over 400 guys of community and you've seen some of the content right we've done these experiences we're having an end of year conference so it's been really cool to kind of add this other layer to business um as well as continue to do the things that i've been doing in my main business which is custom um, with adding celebrities and of course having like the C-suite clientele and continue to grow that end of things as well. Mm-hmm. So with like the custom image curation that you do for your clients? Yeah, so you know, it, it's funny. Uh, a lot of people, they when they first see me, they think I'm in the clothing business. But right. one thing that I learned really early, especially when I got into the game is, you know, you're never selling a thing that you're actually selling. And what I mean by that is I'm actually in the communication game. Mm-hmm. Um, and when it comes to even customer image curation, what I do is I help clients better communicate who they are through the clothing, right? And that's not a one size fits all answer. And I think for me, that's what's allowed me to be very successful in my business because I'm able to interpret what that or who that person is, what they're trying to communicate and mm-hmm. allow them to communicate that a little bit um, more clearly, a little bit more potent. Um, so when they're going into these environments, they're communicating exactly what they want to say, right? Because 70% of communication is nonverbal. Right. So I think there's a huge layer that people are unaware of um, and they aren't taking advantage of in terms of communicating their actual message and what they want people to hear. Mm-hmm. And when we had Tez on the show a couple weeks ago, he yeah. actually said that like fashion and, you know, how we dress is one of the main ways we communicate with people on like who we are, yeah. you know, to give off that first impression. So like for you, from the beginning to where you are now, like what are some ways that you've seen yourself from the beginning to like how you're able to easily identify what that person's desired image is and how you can, you know, man, pretty much manifest that for them. Yeah. So, you know, it's cool. So I actually created a course called Perception Economics. Right. And mm-hmm. the idea of the course is I'm teaching guys how to leverage image and income through my PSI method. Right. Which mm-hmm. is basically personal image, social media presence and internal mindset. Mm-hmm. And the idea behind it is and I know you're familiar with the stock market. Right. Mm-hmm. So. And the stock market, right, you have what's basically called a ticker symbol. And the ticker symbol denotes that company's value on, on the stock market, right? And, and like, for, you know, Apple has a ticker symbol. When you look that up, that company's value will either go up or down based on, you know, basically the collective perception of what people think about it. Mm-hmm. Well, in the 21st century, what's your ticker symbol? 
you know, it's your social media, right? It's your Instagram, it's your Twitter, you know, it, it's all of these things. So what I started realizing is, wow, man, not only how people perceive me, you know, in real life matters, but also how people perceive me on these social platforms. So yeah. for me, what I've learned, especially as I've, as I've aged is how to identify different markets. And it happened because, you know, I started dressing up when I was in college. Right. So I had to figure out, OK, how do I dress up going to class but not come across as pretentious? Right. Because you don't necessarily want to wear a suit if you're going to like a regular class, especially if it's not a business class. Mm -hmm. Or how do I dress up after, you know, the step show when I'm at a house party? Like, 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 what does that look like to where I'm still fresh, but it's not like, bro, what are you doing? Right. So, you know, a lot of it was trial and error for me and through being actually able to wear all these different styles i began to differentiate and create what i call the three archetypes and every man will always fit into one of these buckets now it doesn't mean that you can't identify with all of these buckets but mostly there's one bucket in particular mm -hmm. that most guys will identify so basically with the archetypes you know archetype one is basically for the guy he might be the internet entrepreneur he might be the gym owner he might be the trades guy uh, basically he's a guy who tends to prioritize comfort over aesthetics because he's not in very formal environments right mm -hmm. so he doesn't always feel the need to have to dress up because he's not client facing like i said he might be an internet entrepreneur he might be a trader and essentially what I've done for those guys is show them how they can still prioritize comfort while not having to sacrifice the aesthetics, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that's a lame. Then archetype two might be the guy who, let's say he's in real estate or he might be in sales or he's basically in an environment to where it's slightly formal, but it's still casual. So he needs to dress up, but he doesn't need to dress up so much to where he now turns off his audience. Right. So, you know, we've created an aesthetic for that guy. And then archetype three is, you know, your lawyers your investment bankers, your people who are still in those very, very formal industries who are, are client facing a lot. And they tend to have a little bit more red tape in those spaces. And that's when you're going to do like the full suit and tie look. So for me, you know, that's kind of um, how I've been able to easily differentiate and identify, you know, what that client necessarily needs by kind of asking them questions and, and what mm -hmm. they need. And once I'm able to identify what bucket or arch type they're in, then I can give them, of course, different, um, different examples and, and solutions. Right. That makes a lot of sense. So it's these different um, industries mm -hmm. and, and personalities that kind of yeah. mesh into the overall aesthetic that they want to give or just the aesthetic that they didn't know they needed. It yeah. sounds like, especially yeah. for the, the gym guys and the traders. Mm -hmm. um, so before we really dive in, uh, Jay, t tell us a little bit about why community is so important and if you're just listening to this episode and you know you're building out a business why should entrepreneurs you know and you know potential business partners be looking towards you know the the development of community in their business um i think it's huge man i give a, a great example right like you know for people who are familiar with christianity right like how many disciples did jesus have he had 12 that was his mm -hmm. community mm -hmm. and they spread right the gospel to the world so what i mean and what i mean by that is when you create a community you create evangelists for your business mm -hmm. you create people who are going to want to spread your business and that and word of mouth is always the best marketing you can add people to death right you you know you can do all the marketing but nothing's better than having a community that you've cultivated you've nurtured you built a relationship with that is that wants to tell people about your business mm -hmm. right and are so fired up about your business that they want to help you for free because you've given them so much value, you've nurtured them. And that's where I really think, you know, it, it becomes powerful because now once you create, let's say, a community of a thousand strong that really, really rocks with you, right? Especially depending on your price point, you, you don't have to worry now about the anxiety of having to get a new customer, mm -hmm. right? Or figure out, okay, what I'm gonna do the marketing budget. No, you can just continue to feed the community what it needs. And that's what I say, it creates this idea where the money begins to circulate, right? It begins to circulate inside your community and, um, you know, it, it becomes a, a really, really cool process, man, and, and, and cool um, outcome. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, and even just the process of nurturing, mm -hmm. you know, the community, you get better and better with understanding what it is that they enjoy, what they yeah. don't enjoy. And that can save you a lot of money um, yeah. in, in business operations and stuff like that, too. Yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 I absolutely think that, man. And I think that's a process in itself, right, is like figuring out what your community needs, mm -hmm. what they want. And then even the next step of that is curating a space to where the community works outside of you. 
right? And that that's what's really cool for me because, like, you know, if I look in our community and our Discord, these guys are having conversations outside of even me. Like, they're, they're having, well, I'm having to catch up with what they were talking about. Mm-hmm. And that's really what you want is to where it's so organic to where they're coming to that place and they have their own personal relationships from people that you've connected with from, you know, forming this community. You know, even like for us, we have guys that are doing business together, right? Which is huge. We have guys who've given other guys job opportunities. We have guys that, you know, hold each other accountable with fitness. We have guys that are holding each other accountable on on the emotional side. So Mm -hmm. it becomes a situation where these people are getting best friends from being in the community. Mm. And that's what even deepens the relationship more to where it's like, mm-hmm. man, they want to pull up to everything. Right, right. Because they know that from the experience of last time, like, oh, yeah. I could probably get this experience or it's something better this yeah. the next time around. That's dope. Well, I'm super excited to dive into it more, mm-hmm. Jay. And, yeah. you know, welcome to the platform yeah. and to the podcast. And uh, to our listeners who are joining us for the first time and even to our vets, Welcome back to the Million Dollar Mind Podcast, the world's number one community for entrepreneurs in that self-mastery space and abundance. So you're here in the right place if you're just wanting those money-making tips and tricks to live in a more passionate life. And it's going to start right here with the conversation we're about to have with a really dope brother, Jay Hines. So, yo, what's up, millionaires? It's Kai Speaks. So we just had a great episode about goal setting and this goal setting template and system for millennials that you can use to guarantee that you are moving in the right direction and attacking your goals daily, right? So that template is called the draining matrix. And I want to tell you about the draining matrix because it is that perfect blueprint that you are looking for to not only hold yourself accountable, but just to be able to give yourself that clarity and give yourself that focus so that you accomplish your goals on a daily basis, right? So you can order this book. You can pre-order this ebook. It comes out December 4th, but we are accepting pre-orders now through December 3rd, and you will have access to a very special price on this ebook. And it's not just going to be your average ebook where it's just text for you to read. We're going to give you guys access, 30-day access to the Million Dollar Meetup. On top of that membership to the Million Dollar Meetup, you are also going to get a template that you can use and plug in your goals for the draining matrix. So it's going to be, you know, some games, some gems involved in there, some templates. And net, last but not least is going to be that community that you're looking for to really plug in and really tap in with yourself in the group and just make sure that you are on the right track and in a supportive community. All right. So with that being said, you could go click the link in the description below to pre-order your copy of the draining matrix ebook and the ebook community where you can tap in with us weekly on Sundays at 7 30. Just to take a a step back and understand Mm -hmm. the business a little bit more, Jay, like logistically, what is it like, you know, operating a luxury wear brand and even more specifically the standard? Yeah, man. So, you know, it's cool. So I I think I have to kind of tell the story of what even made me open to wanting to do a community Mm -hmm. um, because I think that will piece it together because there's still, you know, somewhat two separate sides to my business. So, of course, with Affluent, which is my luxury line, um, you know, it's great. Uh, A lot of my clientele was able to come from, uh, since I worked at a luxury retailer, became one of the top salesmen in the world, then was able to transition that book of business to my own. Uh, So I already had a really healthy start to my business. And then this is one of those games to where the more that you do good work, the more your business begins to exponentially increase because people begin to share, Mm -hmm. right? Who you are, what you do um, as you continue to grow. But what really was very interesting for me is even though I was having these great months in business, right? Every time I would travel, I still would have this anxiety, right? In the pit of my stomach. And the reason I still had this anxiety, because even though I was, you know, you could do the 40, 50, $60,000 a month, at the end of the day, I would always have to think about, man, who else do I have in the pipeline going next month? I got to do it again next month. Yeah. Like, 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 what do I need to do? What other business building activity do I need to do? What are the new clients do I need to get in the funnel? Because at the end of the day, nothing's worse in business than losing momentum, mm-hmm. right? Because momentum can die very, very fast. Now, when you're on the Hampshire wheel, it's easy to keep it running. But my anxiety was always like, I don't want to get off and then have to start this up again because I know how tough it'd be. Mm -hmm. But I didn't like that because what I started realizing, and this is what what took a lot of humbling, I started realizing that, man, I don't, as I am right now, I don't have a business. I have a high income skill set because my time's still connected to my income Mm -hmm. and I only get paid when I work. Mm -hmm. So how do I create something? 
that allows for me to solely start leveraging my time and disconnecting it so it's not this one of one situation. Mm -hmm. So what I started thinking about, I was like, man, you know, it would be really cool if maybe I could create an online product. Right. And I gained a lot of inspiration from Ralph Lauren because the cool thing about Ralph is, you know, you have purple label and black label, right? The expensive route, but you also see Ralph and Macy's, Mm -hmm. right? You you see Ralph and Marshall. And and what's so interesting is they've been able to hit people at multiple price points. And I knew I had a a market that I was not being able to tap into because I didn't have a a lower priced item Mm -hmm. that could still speak to them and then potentially nurture them to affluent. Mm -hmm. So at, at the time, you know, I, I had a, a good friend, is now my business partner, Fees. Uh, he's also um, has a, a podcast platform called The Roommates. Mm-hmm. And I was talking with him and we were having some conversation about potentially partnering with each other uh, to create a, a clothing company. Right. And, you know, at the time, it, you know, a year or so went by, we didn't act on it. But one day, you know, he called me and was like, man, I think we should do it. And that's actually what started the standard. So, you know, first drop sold out right completely online product and i'm like ah this is it but then we started realizing that wow okay we have these people that you know like the clothing but man they they want more and then that's what um led us to doing the community piece which i think is has been really big and the cool thing about it is you know we run our community on discord Mm. Um, in terms of the platform. And, you know, we have guys all across the United States. Now, a lot of people might say, okay, well, if you have this, you know, group all across the United States, man, how are you reaching all of them, right? Because that was a question we we started having because, man, you know, one thing when you're building a community is you need to get them plugged in very early, right? You don't want them to go 60, 90 days and they haven't been able to feel it, Mm -hmm. right, in person. So what we started doing is we started being able to identify guys who are leaders in certain markets, Right. And we started um, being able to tap into them. And now they run events in their own cities. So now instead of us having to go to every city, run an event or, you know, run a meet up with the guys, these guys are running their own events. These guys are running their own meetups. They're taking their own pictures together and now they're putting in the group. And that's what's been, I think, uh, really powerful for us, because, you know, we want to create a culture to where. Guys aren't joining just to be with the fees or guys aren't joining just to be with Joe. They're, they're joining to. Um, being in an environment of high performing guys that network each other. They want to do more, be more, have more, and they want to be the quote unquote, the standard, right? They don't want to set the standard. They want to be the standard. Mm. And that's, what's been, I I think that the next lever for our business is cultivating that because now what it does is it removes us in a way and it puts the onus on the community because they, they know what the standard is. They know what the expectation is and they're coming here for that, not for us. Because we can only be in so many places. So if you build your business where you're the figurehead, you know, that might be cool to a certain degree, but it's going to be harder to scale because you can't be everywhere, every place, you know, at once. Mm. And was the taking the photos, was that something that was encouraged or were they kind of just doing this on their own? Um, So they were doing it on their own, but I think that part of it is them also kind of modeling what we do. Mm. Right. Because every time we do an event, we take photos. Right. And it's even getting to the point now to where we're starting to set up to where when these guys do events, especially depending on how large it is. Right. We'll we'll give them a videographer. It's like I'll be able to find them a videographer in their own city, set it all up. And all they have to do is just show up with the guys. Right. Mm. So now, you know, it's really cool because you're able to you're able to scale yourself with the content. Mm-hmm. Right, because usually, like you know, you'd have to fly out with your video or get the video. Well, no, like okay, you set up the event. I'll find the videographer. You're gonna be the point of contact for the videographer. I've done most of the work for you. Now, boom, and then then when you really start getting it right, you create those SOPs. So like, okay, step one, make sure you guys get an entry shot. Step two, make sure you get an outro shot. Step three, get some lifestyle. Knock it out. Right. Right. And now what we're going to happen is you have all these guys in different cities doing these events and we're getting content at every single event. Mm-hmm. So now, like, you're getting a space where you never have to really um, run out of content. And, of course, there's challenges, right? Like, you can do challenges because, you know, I I handle part of the dressing side of the community. So you I might be like, hey, guys, today's suit Saturday, right? I challenge all y'all to dress up based on what you learned in the protection economics course, right? Shoot some pictures. Right. I mean, and there's so many ways and even, you know, incentivizing your community with like points and different things like that. It's just 
There's so many ways to build it. There's so many ways to incentivize the behavior you want to see. And once you really start to lock down on that, I just you really will see exponential growth. Mm. So with that with that communication uh, piece, is that why you guys are using like Discord because it's like just is right now the easier platform? Yeah, to have like a text like communication with the members. Uh, absolutely, I mean it's it's extremely easy, and then you're able to have threads in it too, right? So like we have you know a real estate thread, we can have a finance thread, we mm-hmm. can have a um, you know, style thread and you have all these different threads within the, the standard discord to where whatever your interest is, you can tap in mm-hmm. and you get, and you'll have industry experts that kind of lead that thread or, or kind of the guys that are in that thread that'll lead the conversation. Um, but it allows for it not to get too cluttered. Cause like, let's say you're using like a group me, you know, people can be talking about 15, 20, 30 different things that aren't necessarily related to that group me. But yeah. if you create a platform to where it's like, hey, guys, if you're talking about finance, don't put it in the style, you know, chat. You need to put it in the finance chat. You're able to have clear forms of communication that are also on topic because that's one thing. right? If you start making a community and, you know, people talk about this, that, that it doesn't stay on topic and people tend to lose interest. And nobody wants to have they to don't scroll stay. Yeah. to have to find what where the sauce was. Just another group chat, like an iMessage yeah, group yeah. chat. It, it becomes too overwhelming to where now if you can segment it, it becomes a lot easier for people to be able to identify the information. Mm. Right. Versus having to scroll and not knowing what's on topic versus what's not. Mm. That makes a lot of sense. And so did you guys start? On Discord? Yeah, we started on Discord, man. So what would it look like um, just from the outside, uh, Mm -hmm. from the inside, looking out, right? Somebody who might have started or built a small community outside of Discord. Mm -hmm. What what would it now look like to set the expectation that this is now what we're going to use and transferring those people to get them comfortable Mm -hmm. and in the swing of things with communicating on on an app like Discord? So here's the thing. Like, Discord isn't hard. The hardest thing is just going to be if people haven't, downloaded the app before right so there's always going to be some you know initial resistance if somebody's not used to doing like discord or they don't have the app in the beginning but in terms of like user interface it's actually really really easy it's not um it's not hard and i also say part of the blessing for us shout out to ryan barker um is one of the guys in our community he's like the moderator for our discord so he he actually has set up a lot of it for us now granted it's not like it's rocket science to set up but if you can have somebody who will set it up for you right that makes it a lot easier and if you struggle with that i mean there's fiber upwork i mean it's, it's not hard to find those resources right to have somebody set that up but yeah i mean it, it wouldn't be hard you know you would tell your community hey download the app here's what we're gonna do and then lead with the benefits too because mm-hmm. if if you're gonna leave a platform they're probably gonna be like man why are we leaving i'm used to this yeah right and if somebody's used to that it, it probably gives them a little bit more trepidation i wanted to move to something new so as long as you can communicate um the pros i think to your community as well of why you're moving how it's going to be so much better for them mm-hmm it'll be it'll be easier to get them to transfer yeah no that makes a lot of sense and even taking a quick step backwards yeah. with the momentum piece because yeah. i know you mentioned that momentum mm-hmm. and not losing that momentum was pretty much the main motivation for creating a community in the first place mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. when the mo the momentum of new subscribers and new members what did you see a heavier uh impact in you know um spike in membership when you guys introduced the product as something new or do you guys see now with having videographers and content showing the experiences that you're having more spikes in membership? Yeah, so I, I think it I think it's a few things, man. Um, that's actually pretty cool. Like, number one, we actually haven't done any ads yet. So everything that we've we've done so far has been organic. Now mm. part of part of the the beauty of that that makes it a little different is again, you know, my my business partner already had a very large community with what he was building with his podcast platform, right? He has over five hundred thousand subscribers. So mm-hmm. You know, that audience was already very warm and kind of wanting the next iteration of what's next. Yeah. So, you know, when we first started, it wasn't like it was hard, you know, for us to uh, gain momentum or have people interested. But I think what's been really able to keep people's interest is we actually cut off the community. Right. Like we don't like like when originally when we started, we were doing basically suits and we were only sell so many suits. Once we sold out, we're done until the next drop. Right. And now it's that, like that with a community like this next drop, we're only letting 100 people in. So once 100 people come, you're done. And it's not one of those like, oh, we're going to let 20. No, like 100 people, you're going to have to wait three or four months. You're going to have to see the content with the experiences. You're going to have to see the impact. You're going to have to see 
so next time like you missed out yeah so so now next time when we open back up you're like man i don't want to miss it again and and to make matters even better you're on the email list so we're nurturing too so like mm, shout out to this friday we had our experience was so much fun you know definitely be ready to tap in next time you know we open the wait list or we open the membership so like during that three to four months you're also nurturing the audience Right. You might nurture them with one of the speeches at our seminar. You might nurture them with one of our our uh, master class Mondays because we hold weekly master class Mondays for all the guys in community. So guys who are industry experts in any of their fields that actually will speak on that. Mm-hmm. So we might give them like a five, 10 minute snippet in the email. Like, hey, here's some sauce that was dropped this Monday. Right. Stay tapped in. You know, new drop will be coming in three to four months. So for us, it's it's been about the exclusivity side, you know, kind of a, a little bit of the fear of loss and, you know, utilizing that to where when we do drop, it's not a situation where we feel like, man, we're like, where, where mm-hmm. are we going to get more people? Right. You know, the people are already kind of like ready. So y'all got, so, so it's like y'all building like some type of double exclusivity too. It's like mm-hmm. you got the exclusiveness of the community itself. Yeah. And then inside the community, you have members that are literally like first come first serve for like the events that you guys hope. yeah oh man so okay so it's a lot of layers right so again yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. To, so th- there's been like three or four different stages so again when we first started the standard it was just the suit mm. and you got into the standard by purchasing the suit okay so right? you purchased that, the suit that, you in the standard yeah, that was the first iteration of the standard okay right and then we moved on to the second drop of the standard right and and the well the second drop of the standard was same thing right like Okay, you buy the suit, you join the community. And then we started realizing, like, okay, wow, it's like, it's, it's a lot of people. So then we introduced the third drop, which is the last drop we did, right? And all of these drops are selling out, right? And then we're closing it. The third drop of the standard, we said, you know what? Let's try selling just the membership, right? Mm. Let's see what will happen if we just sell them. So let's say if you have a guy who's like, you know what? Like, I already have a suit. I just want the membership. Let, let's see what happens. So then we noticed, like, last drop, we got, like, 70, 80 people who just bought the membership outside of the suits, mm. right? So not only did we sell out of suits, but then we had 80 people who just bought the membership. So now going to the next drop, what do you think we're doing? Probably going to do a fear of loss of both the suit and the membership. Well, look, we're just doing the membership. Mm. And we're going to drop the suits. We're going to market the suits. But guess who, the, who are the ones who can only get the suits now? Now the community, the standard. Only the people in the community. Wow. So now we have this off the rack product where people, you know, it, you know, it looks great. The marketing, you know, is always going to be there. The, the, the visuals are going to be there. But now you only can get it if you're inside our community. Mm. Right. So what does that do for now? Affluent as a as as mm-hmm. as a brand like the, the is affluent still producing like maybe like. So, like um, it's, it may not be custom, but they still styling and yeah, putting so, out products. So, so here's the thing. Always, you know. Affluent and the standard are, are completely different animals in price point. Right. So the guy who's buying an affluent suit is not even necessarily the same customer mm. as the person who's a standard, right? Because like, let's say even like for this drop, we'll have uh, one of the series where we're dropping is called the Disrespectful series. And basically we have this really, you know, beautiful blue and red pinstripe suit we're dropping. It's going to be nine ninety nine. Well, nine ninety nine is like what I start at. At affluent, and that's generally for like a basic navy or gray. So again, it doesn't necessarily cannibalize my business because it's very different price points. Like on average, a guy might spend sixteen hundred, seventeen hundred dollars with me for a suit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If he wants something that has a little bit more flair, and if he's going into like a lower piana fabric, you know, I could get into like twenty five hundred, three thousand for that one suit. So it's very, very different. But here's where the beauty about the community is, right? Because now, let's say you have a guy who's bought a suit in the standard. He's he's gone through the perception economics course, right? I've I've done a style session with him. I've given him grooming tips. I've given him fragrance tips. Now, after he's seen that, what do you think the next step for him is eventually? Right? Especially as he wants as, as his income progresses by being in this group of extraordinary men, high performers. What do you think the next step for him is naturally? He's gonna invest in one of them suits. Yeah, he's like, you know, because you gotta think we're doing events, we're doing experiences, and when I pull up to the events and experience, what do you think I'm wearing? Some flash, uh, uh, some flash, right? So he's he, he's looking at he's looking at me like, you know, this is cool. This suit is great, but man, I want that. <laughs> so yeah. now what eventually happens is like he's like, hey, Joe, honestly, I want a custom piece now. Yeah. So I mean, that's natural. And and the cool thing is, I don't even I don't have to sell it to the guys. Mm-hmm. I, I don't even push that side of my business 
to the guys. I don't feel the need to, right? Because right. I, you know, that side of business for me is already healthy, but na- it'll naturally occur. Mm-hmm. So I got have guys who will reach out to me. I'm not having to reach out to them like, hey, you should do this. No. Nah. So would you guys not do, rent any ads uh, and it just being organic mm-hmm. content? Are you using like a uh, like? You got the content on your pages and you have like some type of squeeze page on that like kind of just gets the emails. Let let, let me tell you, man. Um, You know, I I went to ClickFunnels maybe about a month or two months ago, but no, it it wasn't really like a squeeze. Now, of course, we have a capture page like, you know, join the wait list. Before that, I mean, it it wasn't anything that was that was super um, built out, to be honest with you. I mean, we, we had our website. Once we close the suiting side, pretty much what the website would just be is, hey, we're capturing an email to join the wait list. But now, since we've revamped the site, it's more of kind of like a funnel style to where, you know, we're, we're giving you those benefits. We're giving you, like, why would you want to join? Um, and then at the end, you know, of course, you have the pop up. Right. And look, if you join the wait list as well, we even give you like a free 21 uh, uh, checklist that every man should say yes to. Right. We're giving you those little guides. So now you're a little bit more incentivized to even want to get on um the wait list because we're giving you something of value up front now mm. man that's a that's a lot to 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 unpack is like it, it really isn't even no like a uh, complex situation it's more so just the, the marketing of it organically yeah. and just yeah yeah man i mean and even now i mean we're getting to the point that after this last experience we have so much content because mm. another thing too is like and then even experience, let me back up, because people might be like, what is, what is the experience, right? Like, yeah. the audience, they might not know. So basically, for, for those who don't know with our experiences, um, you know, again, we have about 400 guys in the community, but we do these experiences where it's application-based and we only allow for about 30 guys to come, right? So, you know, we've done Dallas, we've done Miami, uh, we just did Phoenix, our next one's going to be in Cancun. Um, and essentially what the way are the way these experiences work is they're about a three day weekend. So like the first one we did in Dallas Friday, let's say you come in, uh, you have a networking session with the guys, you know, kind of like a brotherhood uh, moment where you get to meet the guys. And a lot of times, even what we've implemented now since the Phoenix one is we'll have you fill out a questionnaire, basically where you're trying to see yourself in five years. What's one connection that you feel like you're missing to get to the next level, et cetera, et cetera. And once we download that information, we place you with people who we think would help you based on what you're trying to get from the experience. That's Friday, right? That's early Friday. Then later that night, we do um, basically an event. So like when we did Dallas, we had a two-story penthouse that we did. Really, really dope event. Um, And of course, we have uh, young ladies that we know that we invite, right? All are vetted, all are, you know, great women, very feminine, professional, doing their own thing and also can provide value. We invite them to the event. That's Friday. Saturday, we wake up, we have an early morning seminar workshop session with the guys. Um, Then later that day, um, generally we'll have like a poolside or some type of networking social. Mm -hmm. Um, After that, we have dinner. Then after the dinner, we go out to the club. Mm. Right. Which, you know, the guys always love that. And then the very next day we have a recap. But here's where it gets really crazy is um, I usually find my photographer in and we'll do a branding photo shoot session for all of the guys. So, again, you know, I've already vetted their outfits. I've already given them a complete lookbook on what to and what not to wear. And we'll do photos for all 30 of the guys. Right. So I'll pose them up, you know, pretty much what I do for my affluent clients. I literally would do for them. And essentially, I pose them up. I tell them where to stand, you know, I, and, and they have that content now. Mm. So now imagine 30 guys, high quality content. What do you think happens next? They start posting. And who do you think they tag? They tag us. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's, it's just a really cool thing because then it allows your brand to get out even faster, I think, organically. And then mm-hmm. the guys feel great, too, because they have this really cool content on their social that they would have never had before and just individually doing that type of branding session could easily cost 1500 if not more mm-hmm. depending on what we're looking at but they're getting it as a part of the experience facts so you got the experience you got the value in the experience <clears throat> and i'm sure it's some other value that you guys throwing in there to keep the members who might have missed out on it not yeah. not salty well yeah. salty but yeah. not like oh i'm, I'm exiting so out. i mean so the idea with us is um you know we have this principle that we want every man in the community to be ill so a man of excellence a man who's focused on assisting and a man who's very very big on legacy um and we have this concept called um every man has a mission 
So when you join the standard, the first 30 days is you're getting a call from a liaison. He's going to kind of figure, uh, fill you out, figure out where you're from and what your mission is. And he's going to actually have you post that in what's called our missions chat. So an, an example of this might be like, hey, my name's John. I'm from Dallas. I'm looking to lose 20 pounds in the next 90 days. Uh, would love for somebody to be able to assist. Immediately, what's going to happen after that is you're going to have somebody who's an industry expert in that space because we have a lot of different fitness guys and he'll probably be in Dallas and he's going to hit you up on the mission chat and say, hey, man, call me. We're going to get you situated. And in the next 30 days, we're going to have to get a progress picture. Now, you might be wondering now, why in the world would a guy be incentivized to do all that work? Right. Well, when you help a guy with his mission, you actually would get points. And these points are going to give you better access to the experiences. It gives you potential discounts on the clothing, preferred seating, et cetera, et cetera. So mm. we now incentivize the community to help each other and to make it even better. If you're a person who has his own business, once you help a certain amount of people in the community get results for free and you've accumulated enough points, we now allow you to market your business for free within the community. So, I mean, we had a trainer who came into our group and in like four months, he probably made like 40,000. Wow. Within the community. Wow. Right. So we have stuff like that. We have what's called our master class Monday. So again, we have industry experts in different spaces. So like one of our guys, Ryan, he has a, a million dollar portfolio and he shows guys how he did it while still working his nine to five. We have another guy named Sam Lacrosse. He's um, on, on Forbes and has a, um, as an author, as an upcoming author to look at, right. Has a, a book called value economics and, you know, he'll, te he'll teach on like sales and how he got into that space. Or we might have a guy like, again, Aaron Allen is one of our trainers. He might speak on nutrition. And all of this is living content that we upload to what's called our standard library. It's a 24 hour library that guys can access at any time that has anything from the Master Class Mondays to my perception economics course to look books, really everything that you would need. Um, I mean, real estate, I mean, we have all of that. And that's part of the other value that we give guys on top of if you're in a LA or NY or you know anywhere across the United States they're also doing many events so like for instance like in Atlanta since that's where I'm located you know we just did a workshop maybe about two weeks ago right for the guys based on how to make more money you know and I had Justin from support black college pull up and you know Patrick mm -hmm. Um, pull up as well and give the guys game. So, I mean, we still do stuff like that. We work out together. You know, we go, we might go to a place like a Pasha, somewhere to eat. So we do these things together that still cultivate value from within the community, not only in the group, because, you know, you, you want to build value within the app, but you also take that value and now make it tangible by doing these in-person events. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's facts. It's a, it's a beautiful like um like web mm -hmm. that that you guys have formed and, and and it seems like everybody in that community like no matter what tier the guys everybody's getting value everybody's yeah. getting value in there that's that's amazing so you you mentioned something earlier on Jay that was interesting and it was you leveraging your book of business from when you were a retailer mm -hmm. to starting you know yeah. affluent yeah um what 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 type of mindset now, this is like advice to our nine to fivers out there, right? What type of mindset do you have to be in to be able to be that intentional mm -hmm. with your job and your mindset in this job to leverage it to benefit you into your, your next chapter, the next phase of your life? Um, so I think one thing that people always have to be very clear on is is uh, the direction mm -hmm. that they're going. Right. Um, you know, when, whenever you want to go to a new location, what do you do? You put in the GPS, you have to write it down. And I think most people's issue is when they're in certain spaces, they don't know what the end address is. Mm. So they spend a lot of time wondering, but not necessarily knowing the direction. So, you know, again, the worst thing is to have distance, but no direction. So you, you've done a lot of moving, but you've gone nowhere. Right. Running on a trail. Um, yeah, it, 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 exactly. So for me, um, you know, it's funny early on, I, I don't think the end goal for me was to start my own business. That, that actually wasn't the case. Cause I actually loved what I, I did. Mm -hmm. Right. However, what ends up happening is you start doing what you do at a very high level. You start making income and you start looking and seeing how much income you're making for the company, but not getting mm -hmm. right. So for me, it started getting to this space to where I felt really maxed out with my current comp compensation plan. And I was like, in order for me to make more income, the amount I would have to work would not even be healthy because I'm already working a lot. And I just wasn't willing to make that sacrifice. And of course, you have those conversations with your job. Like, look, I want to make more income. And they're not necessarily being very responsive. 
So, uh, you know, it, 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 it kind of really was birthed from that uncomfortability, mm. right? From, from seeing kind of, okay, I want to make this, right? I feel like I have the value, so they should be giving me this. They're not, so what do you do? Do you complain or, or, or do you get strategic, right? And for me, um, I, I tended to get strategic. And it was a blessing because I, I started in the game um, treating every client like it was my business. Even though I didn't necessarily have the, the intention to do that, I, I, I treated them a certain way. I gave a certain level of customer service. So that in the beginning really, really helped me to be able to make that transition, um, you know, to, to, to going full time. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't something that I, I did in the beginning, right? Like when I first started, I was still working there, right? Mm. You know, I, I was still working there. And uh, it, it, it took a while before... You know, I was able to make that full transition. Even funnier, too, there was a situation where they even found out. Ah, uh, so how was how was right? dealing with that? Um, so you know, it 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 was interesting, right? Because they end up finding out, and and this is like when when just had got started, right? Had a great opening uh, weekend, right? Because we we did kind of like a a um a opening event, right, for the business, and you know it was good. I think we did twenty thousand dollars at mm-hmm. that event, and you know super happy to getting an email two days later from our from the manufacturer we're using at the time saying, hey, we're closing your account, we're canceling all your orders, and any of the orders that haven't been canceled, we're probably going to send to them. And the reason they did that is because at the time they were one of their biggest clients. Now, the thing that kind of is, is annoying is they knew we were like they knew I worked there. It wasn't like they, they didn't know. But, you know, I guess somebody snitched and, you know, I'm in this really interesting position now to where two weeks are going by. And I'm like, dang, am I going to get fired? Like what? Like, what's mm-hmm. about to happen next? So about two weeks goes by and our, our uh, the regional comes. And I'm like, OK, well, I know where this is going because he's not just coming down randomly. Right. So, you know, I think he came on like a Thursday. Thursday doesn't say anything. Friday, he doesn't say anything. Then Saturday, you know, he and my, my store manager come up to me like, hey, let's, let's go upstairs to talk. So I'm like, oh, okay, here we go. So, you know, go upstairs to talk. And then he, you know, sits me down and he essentially says, you know, hey, you know, this isn't a firing conversation. I just want to be honest, man. What made you be willing to risk it and do that? Knowing, you know, uh, what could potentially happen. You know, and I looked him dead in my dead in his eyes and I said, you know, I'd rather have the pain of trying and failing than the pain of regret and not trying at all. Mm. You know, respectfully, I have my degree. I have a great clientele and I feel like I can always get a job in another better leveraged sales space and make more income. So even if I was fired, you know, I, I didn't see a lot of downside to it. Right. So he ends up leaving the conversation basically saying, hey, you know, write what you want and send it to us. Right. But here's the thing. When you've had a taste of the other side, Mm -hmm. right? And on top of that, it took you doing that much to get that. I started saying, man, I don't even know if this is really worth it anymore. The fact that I had to do all that for you to give me what you should have gave me originally. Right. Now it's kind of like, so of course, you know, I still, you know, wrote my, you know, wrote my two cents and got what I needed. But now, now I'm like, I already know what the end road is. And, and what needs to happen, mm-hmm. you know? So at the time, it was funny. We uh, had a trip. You know, if you basically, if you were a million dollar seller, they gave you a trip to anywhere you wanted to go in the world. And at the time, I uh, had a trip to London. So I was like, dang, I wonder if they're going to cancel, but they didn't, right? So I went to London and literally on the last day in London found the manufacturer that I use now. Mm. And, you know, ever since then, you know, we've been rocking. That's all she wrote. Yeah. So, I mean... That's that's tricky because as a um, like as a employer Mm -hmm. and it's like, how how do you like what makes how do you even avoid that? Right. How do you avoid Mm -hmm. a high performing talent Mm -hmm. that you have in your business that is performing at such a high level, Mm -hmm. has such a great personal brand Mm -hmm. that even emulates the the business brand? How do you like? How do you stop them from not, you know, having this personal book of business? And why would you? Why should? So, you? so he, he, here's the thing, right? I think you hurt your business if you try to stop them, because if it, like, like, if a person's a entrepreneur, if you try to stifle them, you'll turn them into an entrepreneur. Uh, an entrepreneur, exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think the the best way is you can't 
you can't have fear in your business. You have to allow for them, them to grow and also be able to go if need be and have the trust that you have the culture. Because if you have a culture of allowing people to grow in your business, you'll attract more people like that. Mm. But if you try to stifle that person, you won't attract another person like that. Mm. Right. That's facts. So I think that's the thing where a lot of people get messed up is they don't have the vision to they don't have the vision and they're so they're so led by fear that they're not understanding that they're actually stifling the growth of their business by trying to keep the wraps on somebody that can help you two x three x four x five x your business. Right. If you just lead, if you continue to lead with value and continue to lead. Um, without having the fear that they're going to leave. Because most people, like, most people don't want to have to go through the inconvenience of starting their own business. Mm-hmm. So if you've already given them the structure, right? and Like run a business in the business. Yeah, with, with, within the business, you're giving them the tools they need. You aren't you aren't trying to stifle them now. And, and you understand what they're trying to get and making sure the goals are aligned. Like, most people aren't going to want to leave that situation, mm-hmm. Right. What really makes them leave the situation is when you when you try to do the opposite. Now they're like, well, shoot. Now they start looking like, bro, you making this stressful. I might as well do myself do this myself. If I'm gonna be stressed. Yeah, that's that's you, a big you, you know what I mean. Then then they take the book to business. They're like, okay, I'm gonna do it myself. Mm-hmm. But, but honestly, most people don't don't want that life. Mm-hmm. They they'd much rather not have the stress. And that's what gives that what makes you valuable as an entrepreneur as a business owner is because you're willing to take on the weight to take on the stress yep. that other people definitely don't want to do. Mm-hmm. And so what if they gave you, if they gave you an opportunity to uh, create uh, some version of the standard? So, you know, here, here's the funny thing, right? You know, one of the things I asked for, right? Tell us. So I, I, I asked for about three or four things. One, of course, was an increase in pay. One, Another one was an increase in my sales percentage and commission. Mm-hmm. But another one is I asked for them to allow you know, make a capsule collection for the southern region, right? Just look, let me make my own collection, right? Southern region, I already have an audience. Allow for me to do that, right? And we can work out whatever percentages to make sure it makes sense for you because you already know I can sell. They said no. Mm, they missed out. So, it, they missed it, out. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? So, because I, I was trying to be like, look, you know, just how Adidas has Yeezy. I know that's a little touchy right now, but... That same concept, like, allow for me to do that, and and I promise you, you'll be able to grow another million-dollar brand. Right. They put their bread behind it. it. Exactly, because they already have the funding and all that, right? So, but, you know, they didn't, and now, you know. Everything happens for a reason, right? Everything happens for a reason. (laughs) So... What advice would you give to new entrepreneurs that might be struggling now to build out a community? Um, first of all, I would say figure out like what what is it that people want from you, and and why would they want to join your community? Mm-hmm. Like, what are you giving them? Right, because if you can't answer that question, then I think it's going to be really really hard to build it. Right. Um, the second thing is. Are you giving people points of contact where they can feel the community in person, right? Because it's one thing to build a community online, but it's it's another to actually do like an event in person to where now they get that emotional connection, those emotional ties, and those avies that are on the the cell phone now become a lot realer. I think if you can do those two things, figure out what what value you're providing to community, and also create a space to where the community can connect in person can be touched oh yeah you, you have you have to touch it mm. if you can add some degree of physicality to the community that is what i think takes the next level and granted it doesn't have to be like every week right just i mean once, once a month once, once every a quarter other. yeah but because now what happens is some of these people the, the beauty really behind it is once some of these people meet in person and if they hit it off you don't have to put the work in now to get them to continue connecting because now they do it for you because they they created their own genuine connection. So now they're hitting each other up. Now they're calling each other like, hey man, what you doing this weekend? Let's go out. Like I said, the coolest the coolest thing and what makes me the happiest about our community is when I see guys who actually become best friends from within the community that were not friends prior to joining the community. Mm. They travel together, they room with each other, they go to events together. That's where I'm like, ah, that's the power, right? And again, imagine those those feelings of gratitude that are now attached to your community because you created a space for that. Mm-hmm. Because you created the space for it. And it's like 
you're creating this space and that's why it's called a community. It's not just a community for you, but you're literally creating a community for people to feed off of one another. Yeah, man. I, so like a really good book I read was hundred million dollar offer by Alex Ramosi. Right. Mm-hmm. And one of the things he talks about is like understanding and crafting the offer. And he basically has this equation where like on the top side, it's like, um, you know, you need to figure out, uh, the desired result, um, for the client, uh, their per- the perceived likelihood of achievement. But there's this bottom half of the equation that most people don't think about. And it's actually one of the most important parts. And he basically talks about how you need to be able to communicate a time delay for somebody being able to work with you as well as um, a decrease in effort and sacrifice. Mm. So the beauty about a community, if you really think about it, is the time delay is now you don't have to do um, the searching to find like-minded people like you. You've already done it for them. You don't have to have the effort and sacrifice of having to drive and go to these networking events and spend money and, and, and you know what I mean? Sweat equity. No, you've done all the work for them. So you can communicate that, right? That, hey man, look, I know you're an entrepreneur. You're, you're trying to go to different entrepreneur events. You're driving to all these different places, but you're still not finding that, 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 that community of people that you connect with. Well, look, here, we've done all the work for you. Right. We vetted these people. We have a group of hungry individuals who are ready to learn, ready to connect and want to grow just like you here in this community. And though that's the language, I think that like once you start being able to communicate that, um, man, it, it, do, it does wonders for your community. No, facts. Facts. It, it definitely that's a great book. And I, that's actually like the third time that I heard that book mm-hmm. um, recommended. So I've already yeah. have it queued up in my audible, audible yeah, library to bro. check it out. Bro, it's huge. Yeah, absolutely. So I yeah. appreciate you sharing that, Jay. And um, as we transition just a little bit mm-hmm. too, right, we got a, I got a couple more questions for yeah. you. But right before we get to it, I do want to touch on our rapid fire section, okay. yeah. which is sponsored by Poddex. So I got okay. five random five random All questions. Right. Have nothing to do with what we just talked about. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, mainly just to, you know, break the ice, get our audience to see you in a, you know, a, a nice a nice light. And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. say just have fun, be brief, be brilliant, but most importantly, you know, have fun with the questions. All right. Okay, go, go. Coolio. Go, go. So what is something that you get wrong almost every time you do it? Oh, man. What is something I get wrong almost every time I do it? Hmm. That's a good question, man. I do not know. It's tough, right? It's tough to think about what yeah. you do wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, but like almost every time, because I'm like, man, if I uh, one, two times is enough, I need to learn to outsource. Gotta, like, yeah. I'm not going to keep getting it wrong. <laughs> you know that's facts. That's I mean? like, um, I dig that, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just like, because after the first couple, it's like, like I need to, hi- obviously, I need to hire somebody. This is not my skill set. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, every, every time, though. Oh, my. Okay, I know. I got it, cooking. Ah, so you you're not you're not really a fan of cooking. Oh, no, I'm Uber Eats shawty all the way. I'm not even gonna <laughs> attempt, man. Like I, yeah. I try to read the back, you know, measure the tablespoons, all that. Just ne- it never works. Have you ever tried like um like those uh, meal prep boxes? Like that they deliver the meal oh, to. Well, I mean, yeah, that's. I mean, uh, microwavable for sure. Oh uh, no, nah, I, mean, I was talking about I, microwavable. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, you know, if, if I can't put a microwave, it's a wrap. Like, my, my best, <laughs> honestly, honestly, my, my best thing that I, I can probably whip up is like a, a strong hot dog or hamburger. That's about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That, 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 that's the extent. But every other time, every, every other thing when it comes to cooking, it's a wrap. Bro, I don't mean that. I'm su- I'm surprised at that. Oh no, it's a just fact. naturally so so like naturally how you carry yourself. You know the the, the fly dress yeah. and yeah. everything like that. You you would t- take me as a, like you know what that's one of your like hey so you can come over. No, I, I, I I'm not a you. chef boy RD type. However, I am. I, I have chef boy RD, and he's gonna be coming over. He's gonna come <laughs> over. <laughs> You know, a a nice private spread, private man, chef boy already. Little wine action here and there. Like I'm I'm more that type. But yeah. Me trying to do it. Oh no. Outsource. Oh man, I gotta outsource. Facts. Absolutely. Facts. I could dig it. I ain't I ain't <laughs> mad at it at all. So number two, what's the funniest place you've ever fallen asleep? The funniest place I've ever gone falling asleep. I could fall asleep pretty much anywhere. The thing is, uh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, I mean, shoot, I could fall anywhere or sleep anywhere from, like, a public park to a Chuck E. Cheese mm. to, you know what I mean? I don't I don't know if it's funny as, as much as it is just, like, random. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've fallen asleep in a park before. I don't it, think it, I just, just fell asleep just, in a park. Just real comfortable, too, just. 
Yeah. You know, yeah, wallet on the line and everything. <laughs> yeah. God got me. You ain't do that. Yeah. You ain't do that around here. Oh, well, look, I ain't not the street corner, but the <laughs> park. Yeah, that's a little different. Yeah. Okay, facts, facts. <laughs> Number three, would you rather have unlimited sushi for life or unlimited tacos for life? Tacos, for sure. Yeah, tacos. Yeah, I feel like there's more variation of stuff I like in tacos. Yeah, sushi, kind of, it will get redundant. Yeah, and then it's kind of like the texture is kind of, yeah. Mm hmm. I feel you. What is the weirdest thing you've ever eaten? Honestly, I don't know because I don't like weird stuff. Mm. You ever had frog legs? Frog legs are good, man. That was probably the weirdest thing yeah, I've ever yeah, eaten. Frog, frog, oh, well, I guess, yeah, maybe frog legs. That That's true. Cause it was just random. I didn't. I didn't expect for it to kind of like taste like that. Taste or, like or that. Like, it's kind of tastes like chicken. <laughs> <laughs> so all right, I ain't had. So I ate frog legs, but I ain't ha I haven't eaten chicken in, in like over ten years before oh, eating. Wow. Right. So I haven't eaten meat in like eleven years. Yeah. But I had frog legs for the first time last year, or the year uh -huh. before that. What was that? It was, yeah. it was odd that I I still thought it tastes like chicken. Surprising, right? Yeah, yeah. but it had, did have that the, that sea taste yeah. like that. I didn't I didn't like that part. Okay, okay. but it was pretty straight. It was like buffalo chicken, yeah, you know, buffalo frog legs. Not bad, man. I had a little dip with it as well. Yeah, yeah. kind of went in. It's straight. All right, last one. If you were reincarnated as a famous person or place, what would it be? Oh man. Or who would it be? Hmm. That's a great question, man. There's so many different people that I uh, appreciate. Um, probably like Kobe Bryant. Mm. Yeah. That's yeah. a good one. Yeah, man. Probably, probably Kobe, man. That was one of my favorite players growing up. Had a a real huge re respect for him, and then just his mindset. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean, and how he uh, approached things, and how tenacious he was, and how things. stoic. Yeah, and, and like what a lot of people don't, I think, give Kobe enough credit for was how smart he was. Mm -hmm. Like, like if you've ever watched an interview with Kobe speak, I don't think a lot of people gave him enough credit for that side, right? Because he, he was so to himself and they kind of painted him as a villain for most of his career. But I don't think a lot of people really give way to that side of Kobe. And, and you really see it because even after he retired, man, the things that he was going to do in business were next level. Mm. Right, especially with all the different companies he had. So, yeah, I, I'll probably say Kobe, man. Yeah, no, that's a good one. I, I respect that. Kobe, Kobe's definitely a a, a very well respected figure and mm -hmm. somebody that is easily qualifiable yeah, right, <laughs> for yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. So, as I got a couple more questions for you, Jay, okay. um, and we starting to wrap things up. I mean, one, I appreciate you taking time out of eating yeah, just absolutely. to you know had this dope conversation with us. Uh, this next question is, you know, when we we talking about affluent, we talking about the standard. We did talk about the different, you know, the differences between the, mm -hmm. the, the target audience mm -hmm. between the two. Uh, but for the standard, what is that? What is the most ideal person look like that joins the standard and has some of the best results uh, with being a member in the in the? Community? Yeah, I mean, I, first of all, I would say it's somebody who's already performing at a high level. Um, mm -hmm. So you know, this might be the guy that um, you know maybe he's already a little bit more seasoned in the job. He's probably senior level management or or progressing towards that, um, and he's at the point to where he's making good income. Right. But he's focused so much on the work that he's forgotten the community aspect. So he either a doesn't know like where more guys like him are at mm -hmm. or B, he's the he's the uh, the horse carrying the cart, meaning that in his friend group, he's the one that's always trying, trying to get to everybody get, exposure, always trying to get everybody exposure, always paying for it, for everything, always trying to motivate everyone. Right. Mm -hmm. And he's constantly trying to put the team on his back. And those are the guys where I really feel like our community is perfect for because we give them their environment to where it's like, look, man, you can take the cape off here because everyone here is a superhero. Mm. Right. And now you can just exist and be able to get value from the group as well as gain value and not be in the situation to where essentially, you know, you're, you're pouring in other people's cup and no one's pouring back into yours. Mm. If anything, we want you coming to our community where you're getting so much value that anything you do pour is really just excess. Cause your cup's already full, so really you're not gain you're not losing anything. You're just giving people the excess now of what you've already gained from the community. Mm. Is this guy most likely a bachelor, or is it? Man, no, I, I would say it's a mix. Is we have guys who we have guys who are married in the group, mm. um, but we also have guys who you know are bachelor single, but have the want. 
to, to be married. Gotcha. Which I think is is really dope about our group because when you ask guys, man, what are they looking for? Women, a lot of these guys are like, man, I, I, I want to have a wife. I want to build a family. So that's why, again, when we speak to creating guys that are ill, right? You know, of course, men of excellence, men who who want to assist are really big on assisting. But then also that third piece is legacy. Mm. Guys who want to build a legacy and leave a legacy. In order to do that, you need family. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Facts, facts. You need the family to build a legacy. Yeah. And, I mean, you need somebody to in- inherit the legacy right. as well. Right, So, um, now, yeah, I mean, we getting ready to head out of here, Jay, and mm-hmm. as you walking back, you know, to the, to the to the whip, you just stumble across an 18-year-old spinning image of yourself. Right. You know, what, what would be some advice you would give that 18-year-old Jay Hines? Oh, man. 18-year-old Jay Hines. Um... The first piece of advice I'll probably give him is um, be comfortable and be willing to be great and be okay with the people that might be uncomfortable because of it. Right. Don't be so don't be so set on placating other people's insecurities that you minimize your opportunities, your own greatness. Mm. Right. Because the people that you're minimizing your greatness for, right, are still not going to like you. Mm. You can do all the things to try to put them on. You can do all the things to try to make sure they they don't feel insecure in those spaces. But even after doing all that, they're still not going to like you, right? So if they're still not going to like you at the end, be great. Do things with, um, with, with good intentions. Do things, of course, with character. But at the end of the day, stop trying to minimize yourself for other people, Mm. right? Because it doesn't serve you. And honestly, it doesn't even serve them, Mm -hmm. right? Because uh, because you're uh, you're not even allowing them for for them to even come into contact with their insecurities because you're trying to trying to minimize yourself because of it. People people need to face that. Mm -hmm. Right. And when they face that, either two things are going to happen. Either one, they're going to grow away from you or they'll grow towards you because they're like, man, thank you. I didn't even realize that was a thing until you exposed me to it. Mm -hmm. So that will probably be the number one thing that I I think I I struggle with a lot. Like when I was younger, it's just, you know, what other people think and try not to be misconstrued the wrong way because, you know, I had I had a a good heart. So I'm like, man, I don't want people to think that like I really care. But, you know, I I think it, it, it hurt me a little bit. Um, the second thing I would probably say is, you know, um, in business, you're going to have up and downs. You're, you're, you're going to have um, everyone that you started with isn't going to be who you end with. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and you're going to have a lot of people, a lot of relationships um, that aren't necessarily going to go the way that you thought they would go. You're going to have people in, in life that are going to do things that you never thought that they would do and it's okay and and the encouragement i would i would give right and because i think all entrepreneurs have gone through this at one point is you know feeling like they got betrayed mm. by somebody yeah really close family like oh they don't yeah, share yeah, my stuff yeah, yeah, they don't yeah. support it, I mean, it, it, it could be family it could be friends it could be you know maybe a young lady that you were seeing i think that there's always um going to be moments of betrayal that that happen right mm-hmm. and that you don't expect to happen and what i would say is the good thing about getting stabbed in the back is that it forces you to fall forward the uh, key is you just got to survive yeah right cuz a lot of times you're so attuned to the to the pain right cuz you bleed and out and it and it's a position that's only open right through through the seeds of trust mhm right cuz you only you only give your back to people that you trust right Right. But the beautiful thing about it is if you can persist and survive, right, you become a different animal. Mm-hmm. Right. And now when you're able to get up, you're able to look at the distance that you've traveled, right? From where you were and where and where you failed to where you've gone up at. And and that would be probably the, the second thing um that I would tell myself. And then the last thing, probably the third, is you can't do it by yourself. Mm. They say if you want to go far, uh, man. you go together. But if you want to go fast, you go alone. You 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 can't you can't do it by yourself. Mm. You have to be able to trust in other people. You have to be able to delegate. You have to be able to create systems. Um, because if you again, if you're the only one working, right? You 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 don't have a business. You just have a high income skill set. 
And the more that you can remove yourself from the business and be able to create high value, but low touch situations, the more you're able to kind of live that 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 free lifestyle. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I think live the entrepreneur dream that, that everybody, you know, wants to. Mm-hmm. That's real. That's real. Well, I mean, I appreciate that list because, you know, I'm sure 18 year old Jay Hines can appreciate that list. Yeah. And a lot of our listeners who are tuning in would appreciate that list yeah. as well. Uh, so now I want to give you the space, you know, further, Jay, to just kind of share with our audience where they can find you, you yeah. know, any special projects you may have coming up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, some announcements. Now's yeah. the time to share. Um, yeah. So, again, you can find me on Instagram at Mr. Dot J. Hines, J-H-I-N-E-S. Um, and also you can get tapped into what we're doing at the standard. Um, our Instagram is the affluent standard. Um, you also can find us online as well at www.theaffluentstandard.com. And what I'm really excited about is we're actually going to be opening the community here in probably another two or three weeks. So look, if, if you're a person who's hungry, you want to be around a community of high performing men, uh, men who are committed to excellence. If you want to have access to private experiences, high level mastermind, and most importantly, be in a community in a digital city that encourages men who assist, help each other and also circulate income and cite the group. Um, we would love to have you. Uh, we would love for you to join and uh, would love to meet you in person. So looking forward to those who want to tap in and those who that resonated with. And um, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's been a pleasure having you, bro. It's been a, a great pleasure. Great conversation. So I appreciate you again. Yeah. And to our listeners, I appreciate you for tuning in and tapping in with us week in and week out, because every time that you guys give us feedback, you know, you give us the comments on the YouTube videos, you DM us on Instagram. That is giving us data and that's giving us information on what kind of conversations we need to have. So the conversation we just had is definitely, you know, of the result of you guys sharing and being, you know, vocal and participating with us on what it is that you like to hear. So, again, where can they find, you know, for those that are qualified, you know, and and this makes this makes sense for with being in the standard, where can they find the standard and how can they apply to be, you know, become a member? Yeah. So again, um, the easiest way for you to get tapped in with the standard is, of course, you to go to website www.theaffluentstandard.com and join the wait list. Um, Like I said, if you're a part of the wait list, once it opens up, you are going to get the link uh, for when we actually open up the community again. And like I said, you want to make sure that uh, you are by your computer because, again, we're only accepting 100 guys. Right. Mm. So once we get to 100, um, we're done. If you're like, Joe, man, look, I want to make sure that I personally. Right. Like like you give it to me at, when, when, at 1159. You you give me a message. Um, you can reach out to me personally on my Instagram as well. You can DM me. Um, just DM me ready um, to my personal Instagram at Mr. J. Hines. And we'll make sure um, um, you, you get that special tap in. But, yeah, that's why I would say you could connect if if this is something that's really resonating with you. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you heard it here straight from Jay Hines. I'm your guy, Kai Speaks, and you just tapped in on a a specific special episode about building a loyal and strong community. Just remember to keep focus, build momentum and drive results so you can live abundantly. Peace. That's it.